Bow wow. Welcome to Dog Star. We are Sun Dogs, and we've got the pleasure of sitting down with Made by Terry. Thanks for coming through. How y'all feeling? I feel really good. Denim thank clad. You thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> thank you, man. Fresh as ever. You you feel me? Yeah. You feel me? How I y'all mean, been? Yeah, here? it's non nonstop now. We've been no, uh, no. we've been very well. We've uh, again we appreciate you taking time out of the busy busy schedule to oh, no man I to give your fans a peek behind the curtain. No, I, I thank them for like wanting to peek behind the curtain. I thank y'all for the opportunity, though. Know? I definitely thank y'all. Hey, it's it's our pleasure. But yeah, really? let's let's dive into the origin story. So you are okay. Yeah, immersed in the uh, the rap game, as they call it. Yeah. Um, so born in Minnesota. I was born in Minnesota. I'm from Brooklyn Center, and that's why you know that's why we flow tight because we all sip from the brook. You know, Minnesota, like different regions, I always feel like rap different. St. Paul people, they got a, a, a bounce to some of their records. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I hear it. You might not. Um, Minneapolis and all the kids in the middle, I call that the kids in the middle, like all the Minnetonka, all that other stuff. Or, hmm. or you know, the Coon Rapids or the Golden Valleys, all that. Right. Them, them like kids. I feel like all the kids in the middle just like, are like, I'm from Minneapolis. This is it. I, I like I got this. I got the pride of Minneapolis inside me. I rock like this. Mm-hmm. I'm from Brooklyn Center. We from the Brook. We sip a different water. So I feel mm-hmm. like we flow on on records a certain way, and that's why I have to always flow a certain way. Mm-hmm. Any records you hear, you'll I'll definitely hit a flow for you, and you'll like I'll catch you, and then I'll let you go. <laughs> that- <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was wondering what uh, was some of the art you were exposed to growing up, like early on and influenced by. So, so like one of my main influences, I'll start with, was my mom. Yeah. So she used to be in a group called Of Age. Oh, and, no way. Yeah, from Minnesota. Yeah. Musical group. Yeah. They was, okay. they was managed by a guy named Michael McKinley. And um, Michael McKinley had some connections in Atlanta and he got them in touch with different things. And he had noticed true story. They were at like the Freak Nick in Atlanta. They then met the Brat SWV. My mom then met Boys to Men, Wanye and them. Like she, I got po- pictures. If you ever look on, I think I still got them on my my, my Facebook and stuff. Oh my You'll see pictures of my mom with like Ralph Tresvant, which is why I hated Ralph, but I love Bobby. But, <laughs> but look, so back in the day, my mom would like drop me off and give me babysat and I, I started getting an attitude about it Uh-oh. and so she was like all right you want to see what i'm doing she brought me with her the somali hood over by the red sea right the, the high rises yeah, with the different the colors side, yeah. all right that used to be a, like a nice housing project my mom had a home girl named d that was in the group her d kelly keisha that was of age they oh, literally okay. got together and they used to practice in D's apartment, D's aunt's house, my mom's apartment, and D's uh, laundromat. They, when I say practice, I watch grown women. I'm playing with Beetleborgs, and Beetleborgs got boring when I'm hearing grown women harmonizing, and I'm looking through the glass mirror, because I'm on the outside, they in there practicing. Right. And I'm watching them, and I'm like, damn. That's dope. All of them moving at the same time, singing this song. They had this jam they, they were doing back in the 90s when people would flip, like, they wouldn't flip records and samples. They would do covers. Yeah. Mm. So they would do this one. I can't reveal it because my mom would kick my... Oh. But they would... That up. If you're trying and to watch I, your language. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm no, so, no, sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I like really how excited. the passionate yeah, you are, though. But yeah. they, they really... They really got down with that song. And so after that, I started like realizing like I kind of like music. This is like five or six years old? This is seven years old. This is first grade. Mrs. Goldstein, she had short black hair. And um, she used to sit me in the back of the class because during that time, single parent household, but your mom is doing music. So you get kind of like talkative and you want to be attention. You want to kick it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So it, it, it turned into that. And then... I remember I got a haircut from my, my mom one day. Me and my god brother got a haircut, and the Clippers was kind of They're not good for African-American hair. Mm. So it was a rough haircut. And it had that kind of Jay-Z look when he was kind of bald but not bald. Okay. So it was like a really low. that, that Like in the 90s, a lot of dudes just got it. It was like a one and nothing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and they just yeah, thought yeah. they was tough. But I was like, I seen the video 
for literally, this is weird. My mom was, her video came on Midnight Love. And after her video, some rap videos came on, like a Big Daddy Kane video. I seen Slick, I, I just remember this lineup, bro. Slick Rick, the uh, children's story came on. And I was like, it was funny. I was like, mm -hmm. this is a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like Jay-Z, um, Dead Presidents comes on. This is a true story, bro. And I'm like, and I look like him in, with that the haircut. Hair, right. So he turns around in his chair and he just starts talking in the mic to me. And he's just, while others been working that climb up, me and my conglomerate, you know, and I'm just like, I don't know the words, but I'm just like, but he's saying it so fly that I'm just like, mm -hmm. and if you pay attention to that video, one thing that really interests me is like during that time, 97, 98, 99, African-American actors, their attitude, their persona is just like Jay-Z and Reasonable Doubt. It was that, hey, I hang with, forgive me for saying it, but I, I sell to white kids. I don't I don't rock with y'all. Right. I, 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 I dabble in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We 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 drink, we go to pool houses mm. and stuff. It was that 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 kind of African American yeah, attitude. That attitude. You know, like um Omar Epps in the movie O and when he's dating the 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 white girl mm. and they lie on him or whatever, but you see how he was so that he I'm I'm over here. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing in the nineties and like that's Jay Z's it, it just felt in the beginning, he reminded me of that. And it was just like, yo, but he's, he can rhyme. Mm. So I started thinking if I can memorize songs, maybe my mom would take me on the road. Mm. My grandma was, when I go over her house every weekend, I was listening to radio anyway. So all these oldies is coming out. I'm memorizing songs left and right. <laughs> Do you remember any of those songs? All of them. Oh, um, yeah. Evelyn Champagne King, Love Come Down is one of my favorite songs. Yes. Um, Rick Astley. Um, what is it? The whatever y'all want to call it, but the original song that's one of my favorite songs. Never, um, never gonna give you up. Oh yeah. Which I must reveal something. So the beat for the single, um, don't sue me. The beat for the single of "Don't Fall in Love in L.A.", which is from 2017, way before your man's put his sample out. Oh. Mm. I I covered it with a piano and then I chopped it and reversed some parts so it switches it. Yeah, okay, okay. But yeah, I did that first and I had I, I wrote that in high school. Not the song, but the beat. Whoa. I have old notebooks in my house from like when I was writing in high school because I wasn't taking notes. You sit me in the back of your class and it was a mind game. I want to mm. sit in the back so I can be back there writing and doing what I want. Right. I'll listen, I'll pass your test, but I'm going to write what I want. Yeah. And so that's how these influences started. It's just the, all these little pieces. I like but that. I know y'all got more questions. <laughs> no, I said we can like, continue along that route, maybe go back to uh, before high school a little bit. Okay. So so um, then um, I was doing a little bit of, I, I'm not going to lie, Made by Terry me i was created in iss okay. i was created at lunch i was created on the bus i was created in art class yeah mm. i was created at my grandma's when my mom wasn't around okay when i was hanging with my friends patrick and josh over in fit uh fridley and columbia heights okay candy jack and then going to mcdonald's and sharing fries i was created in like all these different areas where I just had random friends and they liked hip hop and they would go to the park and we would just do stuff. I was like that kid that would knock on your door and just be like, yo, can you come outside? If you can come out, we about to just go to the park and chill. Mm -hmm. we, I got a lighter. We about to go in the back of Kmart and like the garbage on fire. Oh, yeah. I got, like we was doing, so I just, we just did stuff. Mm. And like one of my favorite movies I just discovered was like mid nineties. Because I grew up around kids like that. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. That was who I hung with. I couldn't skateboard, but back then I hung with kids who did that. Smoked cigarettes. Yeah. Forgive me, my mama kicked my ass. Right. But we <laughs> did we did things. And this is how, because when you grow up in single parent households as young black men, that's why we cling to Tupac so much. It's because that's the first time we ever heard somebody who said it exactly how we feel it. Mm. He's like 21, 22. But a 13-year-old boy feels what he's saying about, you know, 
I never knew my pops and you know what I mean? Totally. And my anger would let me feel for this stranger. Like these words, like, yeah, we do feel like that. I'm listening to Tupac every day before sixth grade and I go to Sanford Middle School with Russell and Lee and these kids. And in that class, just like when I'm in Sandberg Middle School, they're finding note my notebooks and they're pulling pieces out and reading lyrics and laughing. Mm. It wasn't funny back then to me. Right. But it's funny now because now your kids are sneaking in your kitchen with headphones and they telling you they listening and watching YouTube when I'm sneaking right in their YouTube and they watching me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I know. So, it's so a beautiful <laughs> irony. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, there was a lot of, I wrote, so. Yeah, when did you first start writing? writing? Yeah. Just like a lot of us from that era. When, after I watched Eight Mile, Eight Mile literally it was like it was like Eminem gave us this is how you rap. Mm. He would, had a piece of notebook paper mm -hmm. with a bunch of little yeah, four bars and, paper, and yeah. yeah, his hand. And then if he could memorize it to his friends, jokes, he taught you how to freestyle. Just focus on the punchline. Right. Go slow. And then when you got it, speed it up. Clown his outfit. And then say something funny at the end. Show your butt cheek. Like he just, <laughs> yo, he he gave me all this genius. And then I I took the it was three albums I found in middle school, and this starts the writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my mom gets an apartment in Golden Valley. I'm live I'm live I'm living in Sandburg, or I'm living in Golden Valley, across the street from the Dairy Queen, across from my homie Deshaun. I don't know him yet because I'm 12. He like seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I'm like, okay. no, he 10. I'm chilling. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. Um, and I'm going to Sandberg. And the school is, is, it becomes rough because they start picking up kids from over north. Not saying it like that, but it was like that. Hmm. Once they start doing that, we it's like Golden Valley is a nice, you know, quiet. <laughs> we have a parade every summer. Right. Y'all over north with the thugs and the drugs and gang banging. No parade. You feel me? I ain't got no parade. Right. They're not throwing Tootsie Rolls at y'all. Mm. We know what goes on in the parades. Right. I'm from Brooklyn right. Center. Brooklyn Center is kind of decent. I ain't going to stunt. But let's not get it twisted. Brooklyn Center is a bunch of apartments in which the government was putting people. So we was getting Chicago. We was getting Dakota. We was getting Wisconsin. We was getting Iowa. Y'all was all coming to kick it with me. The Mexicans, the Somalians, and Mo I grew up amongst all the Asians. If you a Yang, if you a Vang, if you a Tao, if you if you a um a Vu, any of that, I know one of your cousins or your uncles, and they probably buy my albums. Like not saying it like that, but like we cool like that. I grew up with them. Like they they was just as broke as me. I'm coming out of the apartment, eating my oatmeal in a in a you know napkin, quick as I can. It's twenty of them coming out, and I know it's only two bedrooms. Right. Mm. And I'm I'm not 20, I shouldn't exaggerate, but it is seven. I, the, the ones that lived in two, I lived in three. My aunt, who knows me, grew up with me in Brooklyn Center. My auntie, Queen, was the apartment manager. She lived in one. My mom had the apartment across in three. We used to stay with my grandma in four, in, or in five, in her apartment building, which was across. So all three of them lived in the same. Oh, wow. Which is why my mom could go and sing, because I had two babysitters. Yeah. So And they was right next door, so... I'm basically, I'm coming home, but I'm not coming home. Right. And I think that's what affected me to be creative mm. because I couldn't go get my toys every day. I couldn't go do this. So I had to create things, mm -hmm. which is why I started drawing, which is why my imagination grew. And one thing I think that helped it more, more was like, there was this day I told my mom how I felt. I was like, I hate that you never here. I hate this and I hate that. And she was like, I understand you feel that way. And it was just like, no, you don't. You don't get it. But what I get what she was saying. She was like, this is what we're doing to get mm -hmm. money. When I come home around your birthday and stuff like that, and I've got toys this tall, you've got the best video games. You know what I mean? You get to go to over here to Wisconsin when I perform over here and do this and mm -hmm. do that. These kids don't know about that. Right. Mm -hmm. So your life, even though sometimes it's rough, everybody has that. Mm -hmm. And so what it, what it caused me to do was like, all right, well, I can, I'm in control then. Thus the sitting in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. Thus the, I don't want to write, I don't want to write your notes. I want to write what I want to know. I want to memorize that Busta Rhymes song I heard Yeah, yesterday. what were the three albums you were talking so, about? 
it started off, I used to be scared of Busta Rhymes mm -hmm. as a kid. <laughs> I mean, it's a... And then as I got older, I started listening to different songs and different things. The first album that introduced me to rap, I gotta be honest, I'm not gonna lie. And it may be some of y'all like, this, 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 that. It's nothing. It's it's dope to me. This album was a great album. It was Cisco and the Dragon. Okay. Or Unleash the Dragon. Okay. And the reason why is because that Beanie Mac verse was so called. I was like eight, I was like nine. And that was the one album that I got. I stole it from my cousin Ashley, Gary's daughter. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I like told her, I asked her to borrow it. And I never brought it back to school. Uh oh. My mom, I was in third grade, right? By this time, I want, I, no, I had albums before that, but that verse made me want to like be able to rap or talk mm -hmm. that way. Wow. Because the first album I bought was Destiny's Child Writing on the Wall. And okay. then This is Magic. So, same, same time I got Jay Z, that was a, the video. I went back to the, uh, I went back and I bought the soundtrack for The Wood and then I bought, I had like $10 and they had, um, reason, not Reasonable Doubt, they had volume two in tape. And if you remember with tapes, not all the songs are on there. Mm. It's like the hits and one or two like plus records. So I'm hearing like, you know, coming of age and all this stuff. And I'm just like, this is some, like, I don't know what they talk about, but it's, <laughs> it's catching you. You're doing this, yeah. you're, do, you're hitting yeah. this, right? So then the first, I hear Unleash the Dragon. I don't think y'all cats want Mac to release the dragon. Catch me and all black underneath your wagon. Plastique in the detonator. I could see you and I see you in a respirator. It was just <laughs> like there's, there wasn't no cussing. Yeah. So it was dull. I was like, ugh, y'all cats all know how this go. I was yeah. like, I used to memorize it and bounce like this. Yeah. The bounce starts coming. So once I, I figure this out, when I listen to songs, if they make me do this, I can memorize them. Mm. So it's like boxing, right? That's why boxers make those noises, you know, release energy and stuff. That's why certain rappers bounce like that, right. like a boxer. And they make, if you listen to their breaths, that's why they, they literally box with the beat. They'll hold their breath and then you'll hear the quick breath. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Back to, it's like holding your breath a certain way and punching it out with words. Mm. We're in the ring here with Made by Terry <laughs> on Dogstar. We got to take a break here in a little bit. Um, that, that. The best social media for you is still Made by Terry J, correct? Yes, it is. If that's on Instagram. And I would say Terry who made that dot com. That's right. That's I would say one. that's the best thing for y'all. And the best uh, thing for the, uh, the uh, 4 studioscom dot com. That's Follow right. the show that's at the Dogstar Podcast. Thing. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back, sitting down with Made by Terry. Gonna get those other albums from you. So you said okay. Cisco was okay. that first one that yeah. really that was the first one. And hit then a punch or packed a punch. It just it did. The second the second album is like a conglomerate of three albums. And I'm gonna tell you why. They all I basically masterly listened to them all three in a mix. I stole. Get Rich or Die Trying, and I'm going to be 100 with you from Nerdy Star when we was 13. Whoa. Uh -oh. From Minneapolis, Nerdy That's Star. Why. So she, she, her mom and my mom were kind of friends. She had it, and she brought it over, and I'm like, damn. I, I was like, dang it, I got I to gotta get this album. <laughs> I was like, yo, hide the album. And, like, just play like you ain't got it. So I hid the album, bro. And she was like, my mom going to kill me. I was like, I just played. I'm so sorry. I was broke. I was mm. broke. And I had nothing. Desperate. I, I was at the teenage age. All you got is your dresser. Mm. <laughs> That's all you got is the dresser. And the dresser has secrets, but not nothing on it. Right. You got no action figures. Your mom threw all your toys away. You know, <laughs> man. And so I stole Get Richard Die Trying. I watched 8 Mile. So Lainey, a homegirl from from uh, Sandberg Middle School had let me borrow the 8 Mile soundtrack mm -hmm. and uh, the Eminem show. Well, I gave her back the 8 Mile soundtrack and I told her I lost the Eminem show. Did you lose the Eminem you show? You know I ain't lose no Eminem <laughs> show. Dog, it's the Eminem <laughs> show. We're, we're you don't lose up. that. And then, like, after that, I also, I was in the hallway and I came out of, 
came out of science class and I used to walk home some days. So it, it was like around this time, we were about to go to Omaha to visit my family. And I get out of science class. I walk, my, my locker's like right there. I walk straight to my locker. I jog a little bit and I look down. It's DMX, it's dark and H is hot. And I was like. Just on the ground? I was like, so I pick it up. It's DMX. So I'm like, all right, let's see what you, I'm thinking it's the newest DMX. Mm. Right. I put it in. I ain't, I wasn't familiar with nothing but the first song. But I was like, oh, this must be old. Let's see. Maybe it's like greatest hits because it was just like, this song bang too. <laughs> right, right. This song too. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm at the end of the album. He's praying. And then in words then started something is the last song. So then it goes off and he does the, these dudes, for real, these dudes ain't playing. We ain't playing. Bro, ah. <laughs> and I was like, and then the album, because if you listen on CD, you start back over. Right. It's back to doom, doom. I was like, I it's listen to that whole album. album. Yeah, circular. Those yeah. three albums, I feel like taught the 2000s what perfect album was. It wasn't mm. Blueprint. Blueprint was like the last of the 90s great albums. It's the last, that's the, this is the 2000s now. This mm. is the last, this is the last one that gets Barely in. It's it, grandfathered yeah. in because it's Jay. Right, I feel you. Yeah. And then after that, it's like Nelly, the Eminem show, and other ones were like, this is the 2000s. This is us. That's why they went diamond. And mm. they were so, they right. sold so much. Whereas Blueprint sold two to three. Those albums sold like five to 10. You know what right, I mean? Right. Because it's like, now this is what we do. Next thing you know, you get Chingy. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent comes out. You know what I mean? Bow Wow really starts popping off. Mm -hmm. Like, this is when these other acts start coming in. So the influence is just for me. It's like, okay, cool. But if you listen to some of those rappers like Jaquan or other people, they still had cadences that came from like 50 Cent and Eminem during right, the time. Right. And that's why... Those three albums, that that DMX was like the perfect album. It just, no matter how old it was, I couldn't stop playing it. And one of my favorite songs was number 10. How's it going down? I believe it's number 10. And I just like, I remember <laughs> right after uh, one, two, X is coming for you. Mm -hmm. It goes into that. And the phone call, or he, I think he called, I think low key, I don't know who it was, but I think he called his baby mom and was like playing on the phone with her. I could tell it was DMX. Right, versus mm -hmm. it being a, a skit. So yeah, yeah, I think he did it as a skit, but he just like was trying to start something. <laughs> <laughs> he was, <laughs> and so like, that's why he answers it. If you pay attention, that's why he says when he asks her, who you, who you messing with? And she's like, I heard you was messing with somebody. He's like, who is it? And he like, you messing with him. Mm-hmm. And it's because it's like, it's me. Like, and he hangs up. Nope, nobody gets it. They think right. they're saying, oh, because it's whoever you're doing it with. It's me. <laughs> it's a joke. Right. It's X. You know yeah, I mean, you don't see a lot of skits and rap albums anymore. You know what? And that's the one thing I've been trying to bring back a little bit. Ooh. So, so, so I just want to kind of fill in the gap. Yeah, yeah. With the notebook writing. So then. It's been going on since what? Elementary school, middle school. After keeping track of the yep, rhymes. After that. And yep. so then were you going by Terry back then as your rap name? I, was just you Terrence. A... I didn't have a rap name. No, I was rap, just writing. Man. I was just writing. And I'm gonna tell you when it got intense. Yeah, who called you into the stool? So it really got intense when I got to high school because I used it as a weapon. The movie Givers that I trying to tell me use it as a weapon. So I started writing this songs about teachers. Mm. I was like doing them at lunch or? No, during your class. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. They're like, okay. Terry, notes. Oh, notes? Okay, but here's some notes for you. Miss Stack, don't know how to act. Uh -huh. Whack at math, no in the back. Oh, yeah, I was, I was lighting them up. I was, <laughs> I was lighting, excuse my language, I was lighting them teachers up. But it, it was like, it taught me, hey, somebody messes with you, you can, you get off. Yeah. That. Poems from Miss, Mr. Ludbrook, 16, sophomore year from his class, taught me that I was good at writing about girls because okay. I would write poems. And if I could write about girls, it rhymed better. Interesting. Hmm. I made motivation. It, yeah, yeah. I was just, and I had, it had to be fly. I would tell you, man, hmm. I wouldn't even talk about having sex with the girl. I would just talk about the girl. And oh, you would yeah. be like, yo, who is this girl? <laughs> <laughs> I like her. 
But you, you don't still have those uh, poems oh, written yes. down somewhere. They're in the red notebook. I mean, you I'm should. I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to tag Dog Star Podcast when I get home and put them in my story. It might be tomorrow night after I get, I drive all the way back to Memphis and lay down and then get in the studio and I get to do that part because that's where the studio is. Mm. Okay. 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 There's, yeah, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot of building going on. Yeah. But I'm going to finish the notebook part. So then. Notebooks kept going, kept writing in the notebooks, kept doing it. Okay. Because I would have, like, the notebook would be like this, and there would be a stack of receipt paper inside. Like All <laughs> the wad of receipt yeah. paper. And it yeah. wasn't like rolled up. It was flat. I was putting flat to flat. And mm -hmm. I had ones that I had to do like this with because I just Scroll. kept writing, yeah. kept writing, kept writing. Like people, there's people who used to work at Brooklyn Center Target with me that, that can remember that. Like finding my rhymes. <clears throat> so the album cover for I Got That Jump, right? That girl was a Minnesota Timberwolves um, cheerleader. Okay. Her name's Dua. Right? Dua worked at Target with me. Dua used to find my rhymes and give them back to me mm -hmm. when she used to give me a break on uh, Target Cafe. Wow. Mm -hmm. She'll tell you. She she used to like, cut, she would be like, yo, so you leaving rhymes like right on top of the cookie tray. Like, <laughs> they're going to burn up. Look at your paper now. How are you going to read black. this? Yeah. Because oh. the, the light in the back of it would uh, Bernie. Right, and yeah. so like yeah, I would get this receipt paper that I could read down and then like it would just be brown right here. I'll be like, right. oh no. But that taught me start memorizing something. Okay. So if I could memorize a couple of the tight bars, I'd know where they was at. And so then after that, there was a show I threw with a homie from school named Otis. Otis, uh, I forget, he went to Cooper with me. Shout out, I hope he's doing well. Um, he, me and him did this show called Minnesota's Got Talent, right? First show you ever First did? show ever. Okay. I had my name in lights at the, uh, on Broadway at the, uh, what is up, the Capri Theater. Shout out to the Capri. Oh, they, sweet. They knew it. It was March 20th, 2010. Y'all remember that? I remember that. And so what they did was we threw a show, me and him, and we was we used to drive around over north. I did street team for my mom back in the day when she, mm. was, when she used to do Juneteenth concerts and stuff. Yeah. So I would hand out flyers mm -hmm. like I got to people. And I would just, and I was, it taught me to not be scared of people. Like they just as scared as you as you as of them. Mm. But you got flyers, they don't. So you cool. Man. <laughs> you have the one so I was like, yeah, you want one of these. Yeah. yeah. I got, I'm the flyer, man. <laughs> so, so then after that, like, um, I threw the show and it really, I threw it with down the street from y'all with some of those kids from the, from, uh, studio four. Okay. Mm. okay. So I went to studio four and I with some flyers and I was like, we, and Otis made the flyer. He put some big, dumb prices on it. Like winners going to get 300, second price, 200, third place is this. Mm. I was like, who paying these kids? Right. I didn't know he, this was like, he didn't have no sponsors or nothing. Okay. Right? Cause okay. I was like, I'm willing to put up a little money to be in this. My money went straight to the Capri. This is why you got to watch people in this industry. Just to kick this out there. If anybody ever tells you they work in the music business, they don't work on music as a business. If you say you work in the music business, I do not think you work on music as a business because all the producers and, and engineers and artists I've met have always announced themselves as what they are. Mm. I produce. I'm the artist. I'm the artist. Right. You guys do a podcast. You're podcasters and radio host personalities. You know that. Right. You would never, if I asked you to get on an album, you probably, would be, you would ask me like, is it an interlude? You want me to, you know, introduce a record or mm -hmm. something? You don't think I want you to rap. Because you, you want to get on is what you do. So, like, nice, nice. if I come to somebody and I say, like, oh, yeah, I work in a music business. What music business? Like, yeah. like <laughs> music really doesn't have a business nowadays. Yeah, who are you trying to fool? It's, it's for real, you know what I mean? It's free. Mm. And that's why, like, I started selling my albums the way I did. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that later. We, we getting there. Um, 
But this first show was the like first, first time on stage. First time. No, I was on, I had been on stage because at Cooper High School, I was a class president. Okay. And I did the morning announcements. So I did, you know, a couple of the, um, what do you call them? The school uh, events and then the, like, the, like MC aud- and stuff? Yeah, yeah. And the auditorium things yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Had to say some things sometimes. Calm it down. Calm the crowd. Right. They trusted me. Okay, I they recognized the voice. They, they, what it was was I got in student council, and I just got tired of kids running things, and none of it was how we liked it. Mm. I was like I said, I grew up with all types of kids. Like I used to, I never skipped school because once my mom got me on free lunch, it was like free lunch is the hook, because you eating there, you get all your meals. It's three yeah, hots and a cop, friends. bro. Yeah. Mm. You got three hots in a cot, especially if you got uh, 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 home ec and they cooking. Oh, you good. You you don't want to go home. <laughs> you ain't going to want to go home. You in high school all day. I'm yeah. eating egg McMuffins for breakfast. Right. People don't want theirs. I'm eating his too because exactly. his is free too. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, I got, I gained weight in high school, man. <laughs> but no, like. So, so you had that experience of in front of the crowd. Yeah, I knew there. about that. So then that's why he asked me to, to host it. Dumb. So we do that. And, um. I ended up meeting all these people and I asked all of them. I had, I, I, because of the prizes and everything and because of the messed up, it messed up what I wanted. I did the show because I wanted to start meeting artists so I could start recording. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got notebooks full. Somebody's got to show me how to record. Right. Mm-hmm. One person. From the whole show. I had, I, all of the guys from Studio 4, I asked, I asked, man, we got this. Oh, we on contract. Oh, we can't do this. I hit Marquise up like I'm just been trying to get in the studio. You got a studio, you know how to record. Yeah. Hey, come over to the house. That's li- I swear that's what he said. He I hit like me that. and he hit me like, "Hey, come over to the house." I come over to his house. He recording something with with Lou. After Lou leaves, I I grew up with Lou Sandberg. Mm-hmm. Lou on the low for real. I tell some true stories. Lucky Luciano with um Why So Serious and Eddie King used to used to like I used to hang with him because when I went to Sandberg, like I said, they let the North kids in. I was a single parent. My mom was like, you ain't fighting. You don't do that. You don't mm. we you don't I was the Chris Rock. Wasn't Martin, wasn't wasn't, you know, Will, I was Chris. Right. Because I wasn't in sports. I wasn't athletic. But I cracked jokes. I go up in ISS, they laugh. Oh, here come Terry. Oh, yeah, I'm that kid, which is why you get the student council. I had kids stealing ballots and like seniors stealing ballots just to get me in because they knew what I was going to do. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to, let's change something. Let's put something, make it fair. You know what I mean? Make it fair. Anything in the world, it don't matter. Poor, rich, doesn't matter. There's always an equilibrium. It's like middle class. You got to some, there's got to be a ground that everybody can meet at where at least it's fair. Totally. Right there. You know what I mean? That's, that's why they say, oh, they're trying to kill off middle class. They they do. They want to. They don't want poor people to be able to look at somebody and be like, hey, that's a good way to live. I could get that. I can get to that. And they don't want the rich to look at a, a layer and be like, hey, they, they do well for themselves. Leave them alone. Mm-hmm. They they don't want that. They want, hey, you up there, you down there, move. Right. That's the HRs out of out of Lowe's and Walmarts and Targets and all those places. That's them removing your HR, removing the middle ground. So you deal with you and that's it. I was, I was going to ask, between when you first got in the studio, so he, when did you move out of state or was that semi-recently? That was semi-recently. Okay, but so I was, I was, in the you studio. You got time, you got yeah. time. Oh, yeah. So I, um, what happened was I went to the studio, Lucky Lou, who used to help, he used to protect me from a lot of, a lot of bullying growing up, mm. you know, on a true story. And um, I remember, because he, he was in a gang and everything, but with the thing about, with some kids, if you, I'm, I'm just one of those people that I just click with people. And once I click with people, I'm not a, I'm, I've, I defend myself if I have to. I ain't never took no L's, but I ain't never ran from nothing either. Right. Like I take, I'll take my L to the face if it's coming. But I know it ain't my day, so I'm ready to rock. Um, but he, like, he was the one person that was like, I could hang with and I didn't have to worry about somebody trying that gang stuff with me. Yeah. So we had swimming classes together. We was in gym together. He was rougher. 
I was hitting puberty, so I was getting taller. And being around a rougher kid, it helps. That's why I was around different kids and by friendly and stuff. I used to lie to those kids and say I was a different age because I was taller. Mm. But it was they was rough like me, so it was like equal. It was being with your equilibrium group, mm-hmm. you know. And so like when he got me in the studio, and um, I met Lou there, and we was doing everything. I did the first little song, and he still has it. It's called Movie Number Two. You can find it on Facebook. I could I'll post that. <laughs> I can message you on yeah. some of this stuff. Y'all ever want to clip it or anything? But uh. Yeah, he um that was the first recording ever. I wrote it there and did I I punched it in. And I was like, and I didn't like how I punched it in. So the next time I came, because I want to record more. I start coming to his house and want to record. I was like, yo, if I bring some raps, can I, can you record me? He's like, yeah. For like five dollars or something, an hour or something. Right. He's like, yeah. I named the price. We set that up. He'll tell you. We'll uh, talk more about that when we come back after the break. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're sitting down with Made by Terry here on Dogstar. We'll be right back. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow. And we're back sitting down with Made by Terry, talking about the first experience in the studio. Yep. Um, So when you came back. The first few, yeah. 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 So so Marquise is recording me, and then I come back, and I'm like, I'm like, I want to, you know, make this a thing. So I'm like, I'll do $5. And you just record, like we'll mm-hmm. do a song a day or two if I can get a menu. Yeah, that's cool. Summer of 2010, I recorded 36 songs because I was at his house that much. Oh my gosh. They would smoke in the studio, like in their part. And I didn't smoke at the time. So I would like bring a a, a little like paper bag that I put tape over and made it so it didn't rip. And I would put it over my mouth. <laughs> until I got to the studio and then I put the stuff over the door and he it got to the point where I started recording myself and then him and his girlfriend got into it. It was her laptop. Oh no. Which is his wife and stuff now, but or they it it's, worked out. They, they, yeah, they together forever. But um he um after that I was like, I remember the program. It was a mixed craft six. The girlfriend I had at the time gave me a laptop because I had bought like prom dresses and stuff for her. So her dad gave me this laptop. Mm. Um, I took the laptop, I put Mixcraft on it, and then I built my first studio. Mm-hmm. Now when you say built, you mean built? I mean, I gutted it out. If you look at my very first YouTube video, that room is a room I gutted out in my mom's basement. Oh, wow. And I got a, a, a I, I didn't take any videos of it today. I may take one before I leave uh, Minnesota, but I gutted out that room, all the shelves and everything, put a mic in there, left yeah. some shelves so I can put my laptop in there and turned it into the studio. Oh my God. It was this, that play. And I was and and I was rolling. I put out three mixtapes. And what I did is I I would like put songs on CDs. I would do the freestyles, put songs on CDs, give them out at my jobs. And messing with women mess my time is the reason why there's gaps of me not working on music like I'm supposed to have. <laughs> so that's like, that jumps you from, it was called, um, this is this is when I went by Terry J or T Woods at first. T Woods, was that the uh, first? Uh, okay, and then I, I messed around. I used to cut hair. I used to cut kids' hair back in the day. He has a homie named Dave who's a barber. Mm. He's a big time barber in Minnesota. Dark skin. It, I think he is he Nigerian. I, I don't want to say he's Nigerian and he's not, but he's um he's from Africa. He's got Af- origins in Africa. He's a barber. I I used to cut his hair. Okay. He brought me to T Woods' house. He was like, "Yo, my man, my friend Tavante want his hair cut. Can you come to the crib?" I come to the crib. I'm like, "You're a lie. You T Woods?" He right. like, "Yeah." I'm like, bro, I just was at the house mad because some dude running around with my name and I'm trying to push these no mixtapes. That thus birthed Terry J. Okay. So I was like, it's going to be Terry J. Um, I didn't put out any mixtapes. I put out some freestyles in like 2015 and stuff. Nothing was making it. I wasn't, I would go on SoundCloud and put these freestyles out and mm-hmm. SoundCloud was back then would strike you. Like, they'll take your song down, let you know it's gone. Like, get uh, that out of here. Oh, uh-huh. just because you're done on the beat or what? Well, it, it would be, they. I think it was, they would say it's because of the beat, but I feel like you didn't get enough likes for it to float. 
Because if, if you got enough right. likes, then I'm pretty sure they let stuff go like, okay, this song, they, they like it, obviously, even if it's a sample. Let it float a little bit. Mm. But when you put something out and it doesn't really have that, and then I was tagging, like I had, I used a Childish Gambino beat and I tagged, um, I forget her name, who who did the album 21 and and um, now she's after 30 or something like that. Adele? Adele, yeah. I tagged Adele in a song. Mm -hmm. Man, they kicked that out of here. <laughs> They got that out of here so quick. But then it taught me things. And so for while I was dating these girls, I stopped rapping. Okay. I was I was putting out freestyles on Facebook. I was trying, but I, I just nothing was clicking. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't writing my own like I wasn't writing material. I was writing flows. Right. It was just a bunch of flows that I wrote at Target. Mm. I was spitting them finally on the beats. Mm -hmm. So it was like practice for years. Mm -hmm. In the and, home studio. Yep. And then I um I stopped dating a girl and I, I had a roommate and it's it's my man Ramon from Free Minds. I me and him knew each other from high school. Okay. I used to cut his hair too. Okay. So I was using haircut as a hustle. Mm -hmm. Um and also in high school, just to st throw this out there where it started, my clothes started in high school. My grandma used to teach I knew how to draw. She knew how to use puff paint. So we used to make shirts together. And then when I got to high school, I wanted gear nobody had mm -hmm. because unique, I, I, yeah. I wanted it. And so the one time I bought some Jordans, it was the Fusions. And with the Fusions, I remember there was only two colors at the time. So I picked the white and the blacks and I was rocking them. Okay, I was okay. only one for the week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Come next week, I didn't got two white tees, my name on them because I didn't puff painted it out. My mm -hmm. fits fresh. Somebody else got them. Game over. We all yeah. equal now. <laughs> I said, okay. I know what I'm doing. We wearing nothing but Adidas, Chucks, and we're going to stick with some, maybe throw some Reeboks in, and we're going to make all our own clothes. We're going to just puff paint it, design it, sew it, whatever. I took sewing class, thus the beginning of, a, of me creating clothes. Wow. I used to put it on my friends, try to get them to wear stuff. My one homie, the homie who helped me do that black T-shirt that's in your memorabilia. That you donated. Yeah. That I donated. He was the first person to ever buy a shirt from me. He bought him and his girl a shirt on Valentine's Day from me at age 14 that I used with a needle and thread and some bandanas. Wow. So I put that on my on, on my my name on That's Terrence amazing. J. Woodall. He did that. Yeah. So he, 14 where, mm -hmm. yeah, so you're more of a and clothing guess, designer before a rapper, and, and, really. Well, I was going through a time and that time with you and your parents they ain't understanding you so y'all ain't clicking. My mom had my brother mm. when I was 11. Her last tour was when I was 11 too. Okay. So what she did is she she gave music one last big run by herself mm -hmm. and she got far. Now I'm talking New York far. She was in New York performing. I'm talking there was comedians there that I've seen on TV. I knew now I'm like oh she's there now. We <laughs> in now. Yeah, and ain't no ain't no group problems. Right. It's just us. She comes back, she's popping. Mm. Meets my, my my brother's dad at the club. <laughs> and I already knew, like, he probably bought all the drinks of all the bar. <laughs> like, oh, I'm yeah. buying everybody yeah. to get this one. Cause my mom, a lot of times she would perform when she met these oh. like her her like my our dad or something like that. But so after all of that, that's where the the clothing started. Yeah. But um Ramon was my my roommate and I was cutting his hair and his homie is Gaines FM. Gaines is at the house one day playing Dragon Ball Z with him. Okay. It, he playing Tenkaichi. No, no, no. They're playing uh Xenoverse one. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, man, I uh I I you know, I, I messed with the purple album. I've been messing with your stuff since high school because he's from Cooper too. Oh, but I never okay. crossed paths with him. But we he mm. knew of me because his last year is when I started the announcements. Mm. I knew of him because his last year is when he started freestyling and rapping for real. Nah. Wow. He literally left school. We all knew what games was gonna be when he left. That's why, like, I like there's a couple of people in, in Minnesota hip hop that I respect a certain way for a reason. Mm. Gains because we all watch that dude start like I'm making music keep that college out of here and he never looked straight 
He was never going to go back to school and do that. He was doing this. Right. And he stayed over there. And he's he's very successful now. But he doesn't really need music. So he he he, he, mean, he does it in his leisure. He does it when it's fun mm-hmm. for him. But, man, he, when you can travel the world, like, what's the point of putting out a rap album? But, um, and so I asked him, could I, you know, could I work with him or whatever? He was like, yeah, would you like to? I like bet. So I let I would let him hear freestyles and stuff. And he was just like, okay, I see you trying to do something. Right. I was messing with a girl at the time. And I was like, oh, if you, I had already wanted to be out of the relationship, but I was like, this, if you're going to do music, this is your way back. You get around these dudes. You stick around these guys. Mm. And they're going to get you where you need to be. Mm. don't it ain't no use them type thing it's like these are this is who you want to be with i put this on the bible after new year's 2016 i was at every mcdonald's they was eating breakfast at i skipped work and went to every show they was at i was i was street teaming for them i picked them up i cut all their hair wow i was their barber i go get their flyers they ran out of flyers I use my Normandale printing to print more flyers. Okay, mm. okay. I meet Novion. I meet all these. I'm meeting people when they starting off. Sean Anonymous's birthday, first time I seen Plaza. It's the first time I see Dwynell rolling. Mm. This is before Gaines is about to release Smile. And to, you see, I, I know my dates. Yeah, mm. yeah. This is also before the Playboy Cardi show in 2016 where FM sold out what, what used to be um, uh, Mill City. Okay. And it was, it was, it was, what did they have? I forgot the capacity, but we hit like, I think the capacity is 2000 and we might have hit 1800 because the show was so packed to go to the bar. You had to come out, go over to the wall, walk along the <laughs> oh, wall, come no. around mm-hmm. and go to the bar yeah, and then walk that drink back around. Right. Bro, that, that's when I, re- I knew I wanted to be with them dudes. I was watching them. I was, so this is the origin story. Um, Novion is about to get on set and he's like he comes up to me cause he's like he's like Kay said that you're the one in charge of visuals I was like I am <laughs> I was already tile manager I then ran and got these Hennessy bottles for Playboy Cardi yeah. and the Skittles cause he likes Skittles minis you probably didn't know that about mm. Playboy Cardi I went and got that because Kay is like yo we j- he just dropped the list on me from the airport yeah. I need you to run and get this Yeah, I'm down cause I won in on this rap game mm. So I run over there and do that. After I do that, I come back to the show. Novion's like, he said, you in charge of visuals. I'm at a laptop. Don't know nothing. Bobby or Robert Henry, the visual, tells me he's upstairs kicking it with Cardi and everybody. Right. He comes down and shows me how to work it. So I'm re- I'm a real life FM you know what I mean? This is like, I'm in, and I'm in college at the time. Yeah. Right. So I'm doing this for real. This this is your understudy right now. Mm-hmm. You have signed on to do this. You want to be this? This is how you're going to do it. This is your work study. I'm work studying with, with FM season. And so like, I'm sitting there with them. I'm doing the visuals for Novion's set while he's performing. Wow. Changing the songs in between because he can't have lots come on before he does it because he still got to do. I'm a chef, let me cook. Right, mm-hmm. right. And if you ask Novion, I know the order of that set because he literally texted to me. Mm-hmm. He was like, "What's your number? I'm finna text you the order." <laughs> and I just was like, "Yeah, all right. I, I ain't like his attitude." I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. all right. I'm gonna tell you why. Why I, I respect Novion, and Novion is actually the inventor of what invented trunks." Hmm. Yeah. So I'm explain what happened. So Novion and and Minnesota hip hop, like I, I feel should pat like probably like pat him on the back a little more or at least respect him a little more. And the reason I say that is like he's one of the the people that even though it was a SoundCloud time and that's what blew a lot of people up, he was one of the people that started like this and went real slow hmm. and didn't complain but got up. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you talking about somebody who was at, you know, first at 7th Street and she, whether he packed it or he didn't. Mm-hmm. He was there where it was icy or it was hot. So when you when you working like that, of course, uh, eventually the ball going to fall in your court. And so, like, I'm doing that for him. And after his set, 
I'm like, yeah, all right. So I get it back. I'm, I put lots last. The list is done. I'm walking off. I go get a drink. I'm getting ready to walk back to the backstage mm. and um, talk with FMCs. Because now after him, Cardi comes on, I'm done. Right. I hear, everybody ready? One, two, one. I got everything you need. I got lots. I got mm. lots. I was like, who is that? I look, it's Novion. I was like, okay. That guy. That you want to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I go to him, I say, hey, bro, what would you say to an artist who is like trying to get in this and don't really know how to start or anything? He was like, I, he, he, this is exactly how he answered. You know, I know Vian, he kind of different when he answers his questions. He's like, yeah, I would probably say uh, he does his hat. He was <laughs> like, if you're going to start, don't stop. And he gave me this look and he walked off. And I was like, yeah, I, I seen him again perform with this time I'm starting to write. Um, I've, I've, one of my friends, Gabe Weah, brings his nephew to me and is like, hey, my nephew, Chase Mula, rest, in, rest his soul, God rest in peace. Mm -hmm. He brings him to me and he goes, he's coming to live in Minnesota. He likes rap music. I was wondering if you know something, if you could show him some stuff. Mm -hmm. He brings him to the house. He's 14. Uh -oh. I'm 20. I'm 25. Mm. I start spitting, you know, a little flow. He spits one. I start freestyling some little bars. He does some. I do two. He does two. I do two. He I'm oh, like, okay. Fun. Yeah. Okay. I was like, all right, Gabe, let me get my equipment together and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Now, at this time, I'm still on Mixcraft, but I got to upgrade. So I upgraded it. I'm in school, so I get a second laptop. So I put a bootleg version of FL Studio on there and I started putting Mixcraft on there too. So I'm, my equipment starting, at the, this is the first studio ever, an apartment mm -hmm. oh, wow. in Queen, or Queen, in Crystal, Minnesota. Is where Chase, or not Chase, ugh, is where Chansa, shot his video or half of his video I think for it's either face or get no his gang he shot half his video for gang in there because I have a a big Dragon Ball Z poster mm -hmm. that I painted it's the first Vegeta and uh he liked the background so he's like yo he was getting his hair cut I cut I used to cut I used to cut free minds and then I cut uh vice boys right <laughs> wow. I cut all of them I cut oh. them all they used to come to the crib and get cut and so like during that time, that's how that's how I got my foot in Minnesota hip hop. Mm -hmm. I'm always at shows. I'm always handing out flyers. I'm always meeting people. I'm at whether it's Pilot Johnny's Angel and, De and Demons release or Tech's birthday party with champagne at Wolf Chase, or it's that like I'm always at these places and I'm always clicking with these people. So I'm starting to feel like, okay, they know me. I know them. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could start turning some of these wheels. Mm -hmm. I started going to the Red Sea doing performances. And at the time, FMC or Free Minds used to throw shows. And when they was throwing shows, we would bring people. And like, I was hosting them just like high school, just like the oldest show, just like mm. everything. So right after I did that, I remember that this guy, his name is Just Will. We had this one show. He brought his own mic. He starts from the back of uh, Part Wolf. And it was a crowd. This, this, when we were throwing them, we were allowing people to, um, we, they would buy the tickets from us mm -hmm. and, you know, sell them at their own price. So they were packing it out because they were hooking their friends up or, you know, flipping and getting money. Like right. they were doing, they, we was hustling. We were, I ain't gonna lie. We would sell out. Um, and even for like certain events, it just helped. We oh, no. really appreciate you coming through. That's all the time we oh, got. No. We're definitely going to have to have you back on the show. Yes, we are. Make sure you follow him at Made by Terry J. Follow us at Dogstar Podcast. Bow wow. wow.